Hello everyone, this is Robert with Team Copperhead and this video is going to be about motor shafts and specifically what we're doing to modify and alter them in the new drive system for Copperhead. So let's go check that out. So first off, I just wanted to state that this is how my workbenches normally look when I'm in the middle of a build or a project. I usually just kind of shove everything aside for a video, but I just really don't have the time and I don't want to mess up my perfect organization here. So in talking about motor shafts, we should kind of understand the problem. So we had two major problems. This is the motor from the old drive. And one issue that we had was the shaft would end up spinning inside the can because it's only really held in place by this one set screw. And I think I have, eh, I guess I don't have one of these shafts right here, um, but this would just sit there and spin inside. So when the can went to move, the shaft would remain stationary and it would just kind of spin around it. The other thing that happened is during all these big impacts, the shaft would actually kind of start wiggling loose and then the inside of the magnets would hit against the stator and it would just kind of lock up and rub. So we're trying to fix those two issues. Here is one of our new drive motors. This is a Maytech 8085 and it's um, a little bit bigger in diameter than the old one, but a little bit shorter. On paper, these have about the po same power rating, but this one is just much, much, much nicer built. But it does have the same issues with the shaft that we saw in the first motor. You have a uh, much beefier back end of the bell here, so you get a lot more meat for the shaft to actually grab onto. But, you know, it's still pretty much the same thing. We have a couple of set screws holding it on, and then that is about it. So let me show you the old shaft here and show you what we're doing with the brand new shaft. So this one has a couple flats on the back here. This is where the um, set screws attach right there and right there. So that's what those flats are corresponding to. And then we basically just have a little um, slot for a ring on the front so it doesn't come apart. And then we just have a couple of keyways. I added a secondary keyway and that's pretty much all there is to it. So there's nothing really preventing the can from once again kind of loosening or wobbling around and there's nothing to keep these shafts from spinning. So let me go grab the new one. And I'll show you how we solve these issues. Well, theoretically. So here is the new shaft. This is the prototype, I guess, um, because we're trying to make this as a solid one piece. This is currently a two piece shaft, um, but this is eh, gives you a general idea of what's going on. So basically we have this flange piece at the bottom with five screws and it corresponds to a pattern drilled on the bottom of the motor. So now we have a flange on the butt that is actually drilled and tapped into the motor so that's secured and then you can see here with my pointing stick we've got a hex pattern machined on the outside of the shaft and then a hex broached into the inside of this disc and then on the opposite end of the shaft we have a hex for the sprocket as well. So this will get rid of um, the keyways because I hate keyways and we're not doing any keys anywhere on this robot. So that gets rid of that need. And then these two are hex once again, like I said, and those two fit together. And then what I don't have yet here is we're gonna put two more flats on this and that will correspond into the set screws. So this kind of helps stabilize everything and it really ties it better into the can and it should stop it from, well, it must stop it from spinning because there's no way that these two things can spin against each other unless this just completely opens up. Uh, both of these are hardened 4140, so they should be more than strong enough. The other benefit to this design is we have this nice big outside diameter right here and we can use a bearing to support the rear of the can. And it goes on there very tight. So this will actually help support the rear of the can so we won't get as much wobbling around. We did something like that on the last design but it was this little inky dinky bearing right there. Look at that little thing. That is tiny compared to that. And um, this was just kind of resting on a tiny little nub coming off of the shaft, just that little thing. And it would kind of bounce out of that a lot. So this gives a much larger surface area for that um, bearing to grab onto. 
So I'm not really doing any build videos on any of these parts because, well, I just have a lot to do and I'm kind of busy with this, so I just don't have the time to actually make the videos. But I can explain really quickly how all this was made. Um, this is a 5C collet block. Um, this is a hex pattern. So really all you do is you take your shaft, you kind of chuck it up inside of here, and then you just kind of mill that flat, turn it, mill the flat, turn it, and rinse and repeat. So this actually makes the process quite a bit easier. And we did uh, both of the hexes using just this collet block, and I did these all on the Tormach. As far as these flanges go, I actually um, reached out to Rocky Mountain Water Jet and had them cut these blanks. So these are the blanks that they ended up cutting, and the inside diameter was slightly smaller than I needed for the brooch. I don't know why I flipped that. And the outside diameter was slightly uh, larger than what we needed for the bearing. So I used um, this little piece, where is that? This little piece, which um, just a simple block of aluminum that I made, this just um, screws down to it and then we can open up the ID and then clean up the OD so that it fits for the bearing. And I know that based on this whole pattern that it should be lined up okay. Water Jet's really great, it has pretty close tolerances, but it's never going to be good enough for a bearing fit or you know something that we're going to end up broaching. So um, instead of like kind of drilling this out and turning this down, I just made this little jig, which made it go a lot quicker. And then once we had all that done, it was just a simple matter of broaching this and then putting it together and making this. Uh, we are going to end up making a single piece version of this, hopefully, uh, but I made those just in case that didn't happen because it is kind of a lot of machining to turn all of this material down. So uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna rely on um, these as just kind of the backup and hopefully have the single piece. I guess um, the next thing to talk about in the next video is just how all this comes together and you know all of these aluminum parts that I made and just how this whole drive assembly works. So that'll be in a future video, but thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please uh, check me out on Facebook, both the Copperhead page and my own page, and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.